so many people are asking me like how how do I live my dream Gary and you know I don't have time I have mortgages and bills and responsibilities in my job I don't have time for my side hustle my Twitch channel my Instagram account my Shopify store selling hoodies and I keep getting to this new place which is talk to me about your bills like why'd you buy an apartment that stretches you why is your car so fancy like why do you need the new Gucci every time? Like, why are you why are you going out Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night? Like, why are you going to Coachella? Like, why why are you going to Avengers opening night and buying the biggest piece of popcorn and candy? Like, the answer to all of your questions is not how much money you make or how much time you have. It's what you're spending your money on. We can do a lot more of this. Yeah, the we, this is what we used to do. Like, that's like a good piece of content. That's gonna be definitely on Yeah. Because then I can support it with copy and it will go well. Yeah. How, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna say it all Thursday. It's funny, though. I wanna go a little bit more into it. Because I think people don't realize that you can, like, go out and have beer. Or you can go out and have drinks. Right, because like, they're like, well, I have to have fun. Money. Yeah, like, yeah, I, like, like, I, like, but Gary, I wanna live my life. I'm like, cool, but you're also complaining for, like, you yeah, know, this you is one thing. You can you can do both. You can't complain that you can't do your dream. Dreams require sacrifices. Dreams require sacrifices. People don't want to sacrifice because they're so used to mommy or daddy or the system or the government or something else taking care of both. It's not how it works. You don't get to the 1% land. You don't get to that unbelievable place of happiness. You don't get to live your dream. You're not entitled to your dream. You have to fucking bleed for your fucking dream. You're not entitled to your dream. You're not entitled. Nobody's entitled to be a, an amazing dancer. Nobody that, that tours the world and gets to dance and open for Beyonce and make 580 a year and fucking live it and go to fucking, you know, you know <laughs> Monaco on the fucking weekends. Like, it's not how it works. Everybody starts at zero. Some people start at different places. But anybody who does it for themselves has to sacrifice. Like, yes, like, Move. Like, my city's expensive. Move. Like, my car payments are high. Sell your car and buy a piece of shit car. Take the bus. Yeah. This is dreams we're talking about. We're talking about dreams. We're talking about, like, I want to be a professional gamer. We're talking about, I want to get paid $200,000 to give a speech. We're talking about shit that isn't normal. And everyone just wants to be in, like, I want that. Yeah, I want to be like you, Gary. I'm like, cool. Like, sacrifice 30 years. <laughs> you know what's interesting is FOMO, uh, self-esteem, lack of self-esteem. Mm-hmm. Of course FOMO is lack of self-esteem. You want what somebody else has without understanding what it took for them to get there or you get angry. You get angry at like, oh, that kid's at Coachella because his mommy and daddy are paying for it and you get resentful. But what you don't understand is that kid is also super insecure and knows that no matter what they accomplish in life, they're gonna be judged for it. You should be happy that your parents can't send you to Coachella and if you wanna go to Coachella, go to fucking thrift stores and flip shit and sell on eBay and fucking have a side hustle while you're at school or while you have a job. Like, it's, just, it's, it's, it's one big framework, D-Rock, of like, of self-esteem, lack of self-esteem slash insecurity, entitlement or accountability. It's these huge things. Like, some reason, DNA, parenting, circumstance, I'm on the extreme end of everything's my fault. Nobody owes me shit. I shouldn't get anything unless I bleed for it. And you think that was your dad? I think that was my mom and my dad. Both. I don't complain because they came from a place where fucking you go to jail for being Jewish in Russia. You, you know, so how am I gonna complain about not having Nintendo when my parents' toilets were outside? But some people grow up with those hardships and they're, they, they get sad. They're like, they feel like somebody owes them something. Like, I'm from the hood, like, the world owes me something. Yes, in theory, but like, in theory, it doesn't like, play out in life. I feel like a lot of the conversations come from their parents. Too, of course. Like, your older history. sister says you, yeah. the world sucks and you're owed something. Yeah. Your parents, a hundred percent. Like, that's why I never stereotype because it's family by family. There's immigrants that come to this country and feel like the government should take care of them. There's immigrants that come to this country and think they should give back to the country. Cool. There's people in the hood that think it's fucked up and like they're owed something. There's people in the hood that think it's an advantage and it's the way you get out. What There's about some the people that grew up here in America and the people like in middle 
Central America, like, what do you think they are thinking about? Like, do you think they're defensive because a lot of people are coming in? And a lot of well, that gets political. Like, I'm not even going to go not there. Even saying, I'm saying from the psychological. From the psychological standpoint, you're one of two things. You think you're owed something or you don't. Whether you're in middle America and immigrants are coming in, or plenty of people don't like immigrants on the East and West Coast too. I don't stereotype anymore. It's a one person game. And here's that game. Do you think that somebody owes you something or don't you? If you're lucky enough to think that nobody owes you anything, then you get to work. If you think somebody that, if you think somebody owes you something, then you get lazy and you're entitled and you're fucking weak and you're fucking soft and you're gonna lose. That's what's up, partner. That's what's fucking up. Now, I want to go on the uh, a positive of like, okay, if you do go to Coachella. Yes. Enjoy well, Coachella. No, but also like, use it as an opportunity, right? Like, I feel like a lot of people are... Yeah, I mean, but by the way, if, you're op- what you, if what you need is you've been working hard and what you actually need is two days of fucking drinking and fucking hooking up, yeah. then do that. If you want to go and network because you're on your business grind, good. Like, my two cents... I'm not judging people other than I'm asking people and I'm bringing up a different debate that isn't being talked about a lot, which is why do you want to go to Coachella? That's what I'm interested in. Why do you want the newest pair of Yeezys? Why? Why? Because you got to look fresh for those girls? Makes sense. Insecure dudes. That is the system. Because you want to show... You want to make pretend to your grandma that is judging you that you are successful and since you have $300 sneakers that means you're successful. Cool. If someone had $300 right now, buy baseball cards? Yeah, buy, buy sports cards on eBay and reflip them three months later, know who to buy. There's a lot of you know stuff. I still love garage sales more than anything. Thrift stores, Craigslist free, Facebook Marketplace. Learning how to buy and sell things is the skill. I think you should run this whole thing straight as a piece of content from beginning to end. Even when like, I felt good about that one piece of content okay. and then we kept talking. Yeah. Let's just put this up straight. Uh, Seven minutes and 41 seconds. Let's put this up straight on Facebook and YouTube but then let's chop it as well. I want people to see the process of how we think, how we interact. I don't want any context lost.